Jeremy, um, you did some fantastic reporting, sort of taking us inside, not just the suit, but also what it's sort of dug up and what we now know about things that were visible to all of us, right? Things that were broadcast on their air. But, but the way we can now pull all the way back from producer, reporter, anchor, management at Fox News Network, and then all the way up through Fox Corp and its board members is extraordinary and new. And it shows what a frenzy was set off inside Fox News from, as you say, the top on down, that they were losing their audience, that their audience was turning on them because they started out by telling the truth, right, that Donald Trump first was going to lose Arizona and then he was going to lose the White House at his bid for a second term. The backlash was so fierce, and we now know from these emails so panicked executives at Fox that Lachlan Murdoch was instructing the CEO to tell the producers what to put on the chyron at the bottom of the screen. He was And what was it? What did he tell them to put on? It was too anti-Trump, is what he said. I don't know what they changed it to. But he also criticized the... But let's just... But, I mean, this, this is perfect. It's yeah. not like they said big fat loser, right? Right, right. They, right. I mean, like, the, the, um, the, they called an election. Mm -hmm. So everything short of Trump loses was a lie. But they even wanted what was on the bottom of the screen to not reflect reality. Bigger than that, they actually made hiring and firing decisions based on what they thought their audience wanted because their audience they knew was so mad at it. Bill Salmon, the head of the D.C. Bureau, who was in charge of that Arizona call, Rupert says at one point in an email that we've now seen because of the Dominion suit, maybe it's best to let him go because that's to throw the audience a bone effectively. So that's how panicked they were and just how beholden to their audience they are because, uh, as, as Dominion has argued in its case, they were seeking ratings and profit recklessly over the truth. So when does the panic over the ratings turn to panic over the lawsuit? Because ultimately, the other person that gets fired is Lou Dobbs. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the clip that you showed, I think, you know, there are a few examples of really, really strong uh, statements that Lou Dobbs and um, Maria Bartiroma made that, are, that Dominion can make a really, really strong case that these are defamatory. So not only do they get rid of the people who were responsible for the Arizona call that so infuriated their audience, they start cleaning house of people like Dobbs who started this. They, Fox knew that this lawsuit was coming. That's why they've hired one of the best, most expensive trial lawyers in the country to defend them. And and but that's not their first legal team, right? I'm thinking no, it's not, that. because it was the, the case uh, was going so poorly for them over the summer, they got rid of their first legal team and law firm and are now using another one. Uh, and, and, you know, defamation cases are, by uh, the design of the law, very hard to win. What you have to do is effectively get inside the heads of the people in Fox News. Well, these emails and text messages from the Murdochs, from the executives running the network, from hosts like Sean Hannity, and Janine Pirro go a long way toward telling us exactly what they were thinking. You know, I'm thinking of your body of reporting and specifically your reporting on Steve Bannon and, and what, what you brought, I think, to readers and, and, and viewers is that he was in on the joke in his mind, that mm -hmm. he knew the things he was saying were performative and not true. Bannon, do you see, yeah. Bannon, mm -hmm. do you see a parallel with Fox News and what we're seeing? I mean, that seems to describe Fox News to a T from the top to the bottom. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Maria Bartiroma, who has since said in her deposition, we know that she believed she did not uh, she does not believe any of these claims. She doesn't believe that Sidney Powell was credible, even though she was the first on Fox to host Sidney Powell as a guest. Maria Bartiroma's was, was privy to information about Sidney Powell's source. The source was a woman who was so deranged that she claimed to be able to talk to the wind and that the wind told her uh, that she was a ghost and that she was capable of time travel. Knowing that, Maria Bartiroma put Sidney Powell on the air at, as a source, a credible source for these allegations, and did not tell her audience that. So what Dominion can claim is that that was so reckless of, of Bartiroma, that that effectively is defamation and that Fox should have to pay. So, Andrew Weissman, my question for you is, um, whatever happens from 4.10 p.m. today on, we now know that Fox knowingly lies to its audience as a business model.
We now know, as, as Jeremy's describing, the panic it felt after accurately calling the results of an American presidential election um, forced them to change not just who they are, but what they do. They started peddling knowingly lies onto the airwaves. And you can't blame a bunch of rogue actors, rogue anchors. I mean, they knew at the top of the company, they knew at the board level, Paul Ryan and, 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 and Viet Dinh and others, they knew from the top to the middle to the anchors. They also were in receipt of 3,600 communications from Dominion in case any of them were unclear on the facts. They received and acknowledged receiving information corrected, correcting what was being broadcast on that network. How did they get themselves in this legal position, which doesn't look very good? Um, to, that's, that is putting it mildly, Nicole, to say it's, it's not looking good. I mean, it's, it's inconceivable that the judge is going to grant summary judgment for them, in which case they will be facing a trial and they will have to decide whether they really are going to let the public see all of this dirty laundry um, and actually hear from these people. I just want to underscore just how serious this is. Um, I remember Adam Schiff, after the first impeachment, was asked about what was going on and comparing it to Watergate. And he said, you know, if Watergate happened now, it wouldn't be the same result. Why? Because of Fox News. And, um, you know, that gives you a sense of just how uh, powerful they are in spinning uh, their audience and riling, riling them up. And it, it was impossible to escape for me the parallel, which is admittedly imperfect, between Fox News and what our team and the special counsel investigated for almost two years, which was Russian disinformation in the 2016 presidential election. Well, this is an American company that an American news organization that is peddling misinformation with truly deadly consequences that, I mean, could have been far worse. But if you are people who are attacked on January 6th, if you are uh, election workers who are threatened, you have to be reading this saying your goal of of money, of as, as Rupert Murdoch said, of green, it caused me damages. Um, and so you can imagine that this is not going to end with just Dominion bringing these suits. You can imagine other people seeing this evidence saying, I was harmed by what they were doing out of greed. Say more about that. Are you, are you sort of describing a class, a class action legal effort? Well, well, I don't know that there'd be a class action, but you can imagine election workers, Ruby Freeman, um, saying, you know what, the, the people who uh, really riled people up, who incited all of this knowingly, obviously that's the key, um, uh, are uh, from Fox News. The people on January 6th who were cowering in Congress, who were afraid, the people who were attacked, the people who... Uh, who died, all of those people um, have potential claims against Fox News. And it's not like this is unforeseen. It's not like the people in Fox News um, had no idea that their really dangerous rhetoric was going to lead to this kind of violence. Now, there are lots of issues when you bring a case like this, if, you know, for in terms of showing intent, showing causality, et cetera. But um, you know, Dominion, this kind of suit is some sort of way of deterring what it is that Fox News did here. And I, I really think the quote that you um, had about Rupert Murdoch saying this isn't about red or blue, it's about green, is really the critical one. And you can imagine how that's going to play to a jury that's saying, yes, and we're going to take that green incentive away from, from you. Um, when they consider not just the uh, sort of compensatory damages, how, in other words, how Dominion was hurt in terms of its pocketbook, but they get to also decide punitive damages, which is what is the additional amount of money that is going to send a message to Fox News and anyone else who is going to engage in this kind of disinformation campaign. And I have to say that is so important because uh, it goes to the fundamental 
um, issue of are we going to have um, correct information on the news. I mean, obviously people can make mistakes, but that's not what we're dealing with here. We are really dealing with a network that is comparable, not not identical, but comparable to the kind of Russian disinformation that, that we investigated for 22 months. And frankly, those that informa that disinformation came, campaign from Russia led to criminal charges. Um, so you know, this is really serious because of what it, what it undermines in terms of our democracy.